Welcome back guys to another video. Let's talk about workhorse stock, but before we get started, definitely check out two links in the description. One of them is a free Discord server. We just hit 13,000 members. Join us in discussion. It's really fun and it's completely free. And also there is a Webull sign up link below. Click on it, make a Webull brokerage account, deposit $100 and get two free stocks. So workhorse so far, it's been doing extremely well. This month it's up 54%, whereas the rest of the NASDAQ went down 12%. SP 500 faced a 7% haircut correction. Things aren't looking so good, but Workhorse on the other hand, being such a small company at $2.48 billion, there's virtually no bubble in it. In fact, it's an extremely small company and they have a lot of potential. And I'm even wondering why now, why the stock isn't going up as much as I'm thinking it does. So far, if you are wondering what is Workhorse, what did this company do? By the way, I do own some shares of this EV company, is they make these vans. Now, before we laugh at these vans and think they're weird bread trucks, keep in mind that these vans are extremely important in a logistics service because you got Tesla making electric semis. You got Hylion making natural gas electric semis. You got Nikola Motors making hydrogen semis. These semi trucks will be docked into these trucking facilities, right? And then the goods will be unloaded and loaded up into these smaller vans. And these are the actual vans that deliver the goods to your neighborhood. So you're not going to be seeing a giant semi truck running around in your neighborhood. That's just dumb and that's not going to happen. And I highly even doubt that semi trucks to even get into these neighborhoods. So these smaller vans will be the ones carrying the goods and they have a hundred mile radius, which that is more than enough. They just go to the destination, unload the goods and they go back home. The thing about these vans and why they're so appealing is because no other company is making it. Sure. I get it. Rivian is making these electric vans for Amazon, but it's for Amazon and Rivian doesn't have a factory and those trucks want to be coming out in the next two to three years. Whereas Workhorse already has a safety certification from the US government and they're already cranking out these trucks. Yeah, you heard me right. They're already making trucks. They're making four to five trucks a day, which might not sound a lot, but keep in mind that they have a factory. Whereas most EV startups are all talk and don't have a factory. The reason why they're stock is so stable, honestly, is so flat and stable sometimes and not going down like the rest of the guys out there. That's because of the factory. They have a factory to back themselves up with. And they're also doing like drones and stuff like that, but we won't get into this. It's honestly pretty interesting because they're really into the logistics service. And so far, these trucks are honestly pretty awesome. Remember, they're already out. They've already delivered a few ones through some logistics services. And there's some pretty big orders on the way, some pretty big catalysts. And these trucks, even though they look really silly, they're purely electric and look really, really cool. And so far, I can clearly see they're part of Rider. You could actually rent one of these trucks from the 800 locations. And it's honestly pretty cool. You can see it's a very low floor design. The trucks do look pretty awesome. Them, and they're fully electric, which is the main thing because there's less maintenance. When FedEx, UPS, when they order trucks, they hate maintenance. They want something that costs very little to run, which is EVs. You just charge it up instead of using gasoline. Very little maintenance because it's not a combustion car. There's no combustion engine because it's purely electric and drivers don't even need any new information. And this thing is actually revolved around like the smartphone, the tracker performance, and it's 100% electric. I mean, no other company's making this. Name one other company that's already cranking out EV vans. No one. Okay, so let's look at Workhorse. They also got a strategic agreement with Hitachi. Now, this was a few weeks ago, but this information is still very relevant even right now because Hitachi, they will be helping Workhorse to determine how many components supply is still there. Hitachi is going to determine, hey, what kind of stuff do you guys have? We will be helping your customers do financing. If I want to buy a few trucks from Workhorse, I'm going to have to meet it with Hitachi and do financing with it. And if we check out the U.S. Postal Service right now, this is the biggest gem of all. U.S. Postal Service will be awarding a $6.3 billion contract for a new mail truck this year. Okay, so this is a little bit late. But the thing is, by the end of this year, we will be seeing either Workhorse get it, this other company getting it or Ford getting it. There's three different companies and here's how it goes. Ford is making a fully gasoline truck, all right? The second company is making a hybrid. The third is Workhorse making a fully electric van. Let's just see who they pick. I highly doubt the US Postal Service will be picking a fully gasoline car. I mean, those things don't really last that long and I really doubt that the US Postal Service gets trucks every single year. They're probably going to order it and they're going to be using it for the next decade or a decade and a half. So they got to pick a car that definitely was has little maintenance and that's Workhorse. It doesn't run on gasoline, it's fully electric. It's so much more simpler, it's full electricity and so far Workhorse submitted their application to the US Postal Service 
and now they're in the top three. So they're gonna be picking out of the three and they will be picking one company for this $6.3 billion deal. And Workhorse, th these guys are only worth $2.48 billion. So $6 billion deal will definitely send the stock flying up. And the thing is, if US Postal Service awards Workhorse this deal, a lot of other major logistics companies will be ordering trucks from Workhorse as well. Because when you've got the US Postal Service backing you up and ordering this many trucks, you're gonna be getting a snowball effect from other major companies. Now, even if they don't get the deal from the US Postal Service, the stock will still do fine, honestly, because they're still one of the only EV vehicles that make last mile logistic cars. And so far, if you check this out, they actually delivered three C-Series electric vans to Ryder and also electric vehicle fleet solutions. That's pretty awesome. That's honestly pretty nice. And there should be starting five vans a day production in the fourth quarter for UPS. Yeah, UPS has an order for a thousand vehicles. It's insane. And the big bucks, once again, is a $6.3 billion deal with the US Postal Service, expected to be awarded and picked on a company by the end of the year. Now, Workhorse CFO isn't really too worried if you don't get the deal. And also, just to keep in mind that last model delivery vehicles estimated to be around 350,000 a year. And that's an $18 billion industry every single year. So keep in mind, these last model delivery vehicles are pretty big and there's more guys out there ordering these vehicles than ever before it's not just ups fedex dhl there's also a lot of smaller logistic companies that revolve around certain cities like there's some in cincinnati some in louisville some in lexington that's what they do and this is a really big industry i didn't even know this was an 18 billion dollar industry annually so it's a pretty big deal and workhorse is only worth 2.5 billion bucks no one is making electric last mile delivery vehicles eventually it gets to a point where a bunch of people will be ordering electric last mile delivery vehicles instead of gasoline. So this is a really big deal. Workhorse is really ahead of its time getting the safety certification for these vehicles, having a factory up and running, and they already have everything out. All they need is some pretty fat, juicy contracts to send the stock flying high. And so far, Workhorse, it's a pretty decently strong stock. Today, it's down 2%, but I really do feel like it's a good way to buy the dip. And so far, I might actually be selling some cash secured puts on Workhorse because, frankly, I don't really mind holding 100 shares. But the thing is, this stock sometimes could be extremely volatile, so be a little bit careful. Don't go all in, obviously. But, of course, I don't really see anything super wrong with it. The reason why I feel so comfortable with the stock compared to other companies is the valuation is extremely tiny, like only $2.5 billion. Any sort of a small good news will send the stock up. Even with bad news, the stock will just stabilize, will just go down a little bit. And the thing is, if they get any sort of deal, even if they get a deal of 50 vehicles from a very small logistics service, the car stock will go up. Like if they get like a small deal here and there, it will go up in stock because the valuation of the company is so low and everyone is just finding an excuse for it to go up to the moon mission. And that's about it. Thanks for watching, Con Blow. Workhorse is a really, really good stock and there's a pretty big catalyst coming up. They're already already trying to crank out some cars fourth quarter for UPS since they order a thousand vehicles. Things are looking pretty good. Let's see them orders. Thanks for watching.